Hey, this is Montel, and you're watching Warriors Weekly. In our Warriors Profile segment, we kick it to Tim Roy on the court at Oracle prior to a Warriors home game. Well, Jeremy, you were nice enough to show us around uh, Palo Alto a little bit, your hometown, and now we're into the holiday season. You've got a couple of months of NBA play under your belt. Tell me a little bit about where your sense is of where you are right now as pro. I'm in the beginning stages making the transition. Uh, it's a big jump, so I'm played shooting guard in college and I have to go back to being a point guard again, so relearning everything and then just learning the nuances of the NBA game. And uh, I think I've improved as every week has come along and so uh, my goal is to just continue to improve and when I get my chance to be able to get solid minutes and be able to get rotation minutes, I just need to be ready to take advantage of that. But tell me a little bit about the pace of the game. That always seems to be one area that rookies tend to talk about that. Was there a pace adjustment for you? Absolutely, there still is. Um, you know, when I get out there, sometimes my instincts are just to go, 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 and to go as fast as I can, but uh, I'm learning how to change paces, to use different speeds at different times, just to know when to attack and when to pull, pull back and see the floor. Just looking at your play from start training camp to now, fair to say your, your defense at the pro level is ahead of your offense? Yeah, that's, that, that's fair to say. So tell me a little bit about where you would like to be better, say if you and I are sitting down at the end of April, at the end of year one? I guess just becoming a point guard again, uh, thinking like a point guard, being able to read all different types of defenses, be able to set up plays and to be able to get the offense going and then to be able to extend my range out to the three-point range, uh, the NBA three-point range and be able to hit that consistently. And I think defensively, you know, I'm, I'm all right, I'm where I need to be defensively, but I think offensively I just definitely need to take a few steps forward. I'm going to go back to what you said a moment ago about the, uh, uh, you, that we, sometimes you want to go, go, go. Because sometimes I watch you drive and then I think all of a sudden you think, well, wait a minute, I've got to get somebody else involved here. And then you change, sort of change directions or change your mind. Is it sometimes be better for you to play with maybe a clear head? Yes, yes. Um, I think people who have watched me at, at times early on, they can tell I'm not fully comfortable out there and I think that's what has hurt me the most in the very beginning is just to overthink sometimes and so uh, that's what I've been focusing on now is just to be able to play with a clear head and be able to go out there and just do what got me here in the first place. I noticed when you're sitting on the bench, you're right in the middle of the coaching staff. Is that by choice, by design? Uh, no. <laughs> Some people thought it was, but um, no, nah, it was just Coach Calbert Chaney. Uh, during the preseason, he told me to sit in between the coaches so I could hear what they were saying and so I could learn, taking that effort to invest in me and to teach me the game. And I've, I've learned a lot from sitting in between them and being able to hear the talk that goes on. Now behind you, over your shoulder, David Lee is warming up before a game. Tell me about your pre-game routine. My pre-game routine, uh, after shoot around, I go home, I take a nap and uh, usually get up, probably read my Bible for a little bit and pray. And then I head over to the gym, get my warm up in with Coach Silas and uh, just hang out until chapel, maybe grab a little bite to eat. And then after chapel is the coaches talk to us and then we just on the floor warming up and getting ready. So we're into the schedule now. You've been to a lot of different places, including Dallas. You, know, you played summer league for the Mavericks. What was that like? That was a lot of fun um, to be able to compete and just uh, play five on five again after all the pre-draft workouts and uh, it was just fun to be able to match up against some of the, the top prospects and so um, overall it was a Including great experience. John Wall, he had a nice little game against John Wall. Yeah, that was a fun experience too. Uh, just, it was, the whole thing was fun just to be able to play, play again and, and to be able to be free spirited in that regard. He's a great driver. He, he was just finishing um, in summer camp. Uh, he, he made the crowd swing from John Walls to Jeremy Lin's, and I, I think that was unbelievable. How, how are you handling all the attention? I go back to your go back to your first press conference, and what was that like? First press conference, I did not expect for it to be like it was. I had like six mics there on me, and uh, and so for me, being an undrafted rookie coming out, just trying to find my way in the NBA, it's been tough, and. There have been tough transitions and rough games, and um, it just seems like sometimes everybody's watching or everyone has something to say about it. 
Uh, but that's part of it too because you know these fans they they they're rooting for me too and they care about me and so um, definitely thankful for it. Almost right after I believe you signed with the Warriors, uh, Yao Ming calls and says, "Come on over to Taiwan." And what, what was that like? Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was uh, that might have been the highlight of my summer was going back to Taiwan. Um, those were I was there for three days. That was a ton of fun. I got to see uh, old relatives and. And just to be able to experience, you know, Taiwan's basketball hunger and their fever that they have for that, and the way they embraced me, that was just a, a lot of fun. And be able to meet Yao Ming, obviously looking up to him, and him being a Literally. national icon. Literally, <laughs> as well. I think I don't even go up to his shoulder. What's the the coolest thing about uh, being an NBA player right now? I think is is just being able to play at home, and uh, I haven't been able to do that in a long time, and. That's, you know, at this level, that's the only team near my home, and so being able to do that is a lot of fun. Being able to see family and friends, and to be able to be somewhere where I grew up, that's just been, that's been amazing. Well, Jerry, good. congratulations on your development so far, and, and uh, thanks so much for the conversation. Thank you.